going? We're starting day church. So welcome. Those of you who will join online are going over our Tim Keller devotional. And this is a beautiful day. I got clouds to my right. Blue skies to my left. So if it starts raining, I might move inside. <laughs> Is that a drop coming down? Emily is going to join me on the, the cajon, worship with a song, and then we'll jump into our devotional. And this is also Passover Wednesday, and so we want to honor the Lord with receiving the bread and the cup, so you can prepare the bread and cup as the Lord leads you. So we'll partake and talk a little bit about the, the Passover lamb. The cross doctors, nurses, all the first responders. Lord, we lift them up to you, God, as we mention uh, uh, them before your throne. We, we ask for your grace upon uh, this land and this people, Lord. And, uh, and we ask for your grace upon the nations of the world, God. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your life. And, and we pray that uh, where you've placed us, in our homes, our families, our communities, our neighborhoods, our fellowship, um, our connection and relationships with one another, uh, be it uh, through social media right now, Lord, we pray for one another. We pray that we would be your voice, your hands, your feet in the midst of this crisis and pandemic, and we know there's so much more going on than just uh, the, the situation with, with the virus, Lord. And so, God, give us uh, your heart, give us your passion, Lord, as, as we delight in you as we have this time together to uh, break uh, your word 
and even break bread and take of the cup today in honor of you in celebrating your Passover. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, so awesome. Well, it's good to be with you all. Thanks for tuning in, you guys, as uh, we do our day church. I, I had a funeral today, so I shifted the time as some of you uh, know, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. So we'll go back to 10 a.m. next Wednesday. It's interesting, uh, having done a couple of funeral services uh, the past two days, uh, it just every time I do a funeral service, I really take to heart uh, the gift of life and the gift of, of faith, uh, the gift of eternity, but the gift of the present as well. So I want to you know, re refocus my, my heart and desires, uh, just God giving life as, as I uh, serve those who have uh, lost uh, their loved ones. Um, I mentioned this in a, in a video just a little while ago, but uh, I did a, a service yesterday for uh, an older couple uh, that died one hour apart, approximately one hour apart from each other in differing circumstances. And it's a, a, a long, sad story, but a beautiful ending in that uh, we entrusted them to the Lord together. But it was uh, yeah, just uh, heart-wrenching, uh, but inspiring at the same time. They were married for almost 75 years, high school sweethearts, and here they end up passing away, dying within an hour of each other. So that was the funeral yesterday, and today's was with, uh, for a, a fairly young lady, because uh, I'm getting up there in age, but in the mid-60s. And, and so just being with the, the son and his wife and, and, and some of the family there, uh, just, again, it makes me think of uh, uh, the gift of life, and the gift of life that we have, right, even in this day, uh, amidst our, our situation and situations that go beyond the virus that, that we're continuing to trust the Lord and thank Him for the gift of life, the life that we have now physically or health and, and the gift of life in relationships, but also the gift of eternal life. And that eternal life is not uh, just a destination. That eternal life is in the person. It's in a relationship. So we're living in eternal life. I believe now we have the gift of eternity living um, in us and we're living in that life and it just so happens one day this body uh, will shut down and we'll, we'll transition uh, to eternal life so we want to celebrate Jesus and the gift of his life the gift of life that we have with one another uh, be it online hey comment uh, online share prayer requests those of you who are online you're comfortable with that and as we're talking about our devotional uh, through the Kim, Tim Keller study. Uh, share with one another thoughts, scriptures, whatever it may be, but use that comment platform uh, to uh, to fellowship with, with one another. All right, so I'm gonna jump in. By the way, if you're just tuning in, uh, this is Passover Wednesday as well. While we, while we go through the devotional, we are gonna receive communion, the bread and the cup. And again, those of you who are part of our ohana, I know I've been doing that frequently, and I really believe uh, the, the passage, <laughs> uh, Jesus' words, as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance uh, of, of him. And uh, I believe Paul spoke that as, as well. So uh, we want to uh, receive of the Lord's cup. And what a, what a day to do that right here. This day, uh, we celebrate Passover. But let's jump into the Tim Keller devotional. And, and again, uh, knowing that we some of us don't have the devotional, I want to refer to as best I can to the days uh, of the devotional. But uh, those of you who have the devotional, uh, I know that uh, it, it's been a blessing, I, I hope, to every one of you. But I want to start uh, here, and I, I highlighted uh, a section in April 3rd, and, and this, this section, Tim Keller, he, he does devotionals and he sort of titles them in sections. This particular section, Knowing the Heart and Reordering Our Desires. And I really feel like a tie-in, at least for what God's doing in me, and I trust it would communicate to you as well, what he's doing in us and in the body of Christ, even as it relates uh, to living in this day and this time and going through what we are going through here in Hawaii and then, of course, the nation 
in regards to the, the virus. But on April 3rd, uh, this is uh, reordering desires, and then there's several devotionals there, but April 3rd it uses a passage in Proverbs, it's, uh, what the wicked dread will overtake them, what the righteous desire will be granted. The righteousness of the upright delivers them, but the unfaithful are trapped by evil desires. And so this is Proverbs 10, 24, 11, 6, and 19, 2, again in a devotional. And he says, desire without knowledge is not good. How much more will hasty feet miss the way? So again, he pulls together these three passages that have to do with desire. Proverbs 10, 24, 11, 6, and 19, 2. And then on that day's devotional, he talks about being trapped by desire. That the heart is, is not a mere feeling, but rather the seat of our deepest trust and loves. And I highlight in a, in a couple of paragraphs uh, below that, it, and it starts with that section, wise people. Wise people do not simply accept their desires as they are, uh, nor with hasty feet to run to fulfill them. And then he quotes Augustine, rather as Augustine counseled, they reorder their desires with the knowledge of truth. And I thought, wow, how powerful uh, that statement by Augustine. They reorder their desires with the knowledge of truth. And I take that, that our desires are founded on something, right? Can be someone, but, but there are influences. And so I thought that was profound. They reorder their desires with the knowledge of truth, and that's uh, Augustine. And uh, Keller goes on to say in that same paragraph on the, the last uh, sentence there, only if we cultivate our relationship to God and grow the desire for Him will our other desires not entrap us. And I thought that's, uh, that's such a, a key truth as well. Uh, and we know as Christ followers, as we reorder our desires and we cultivate, cultivate that desire, our relationship with God and desires to serve Him, a desire towards biblical truth, a desire to walk with Him, a desire for obedience to Him, that uh, our other desires uh, will not overtake. It, it won't entrap us, as he says. And then in uh, April 4th, this is April 4th, on the paragraph, the second paragraph, I'm going to read just uh, this uh, thought here. He says, How then can we desire God above all other things? Plato said that actions flow from thinking, and Aristotle taught that our thinking is shaped by our actions. And so he's, he's uh, sharing these philosophers' thoughts uh, based out of, again, the, the title of desire, reordering our desire. And then he says that what Proverbs says are, are both right. And he says, use the mind to think. Set the heart on God in prayer and worship until you you. Uh, don't just believe but experience awe and wonder and so again we use the mind to think it's just like this day and and time where we're living in a situation we're going to use our mind to think we're not going to be unwise in in light of uh, what uh, we are being guided uh, to do stay at home etc being cautious safe wise washing our hands taking care of our health uh, being wise that way so we use our mind to think but we also set our heart Keller says uh, on God in prayer and worship so we, all, we don't always feel uh, close to the Lord but we set our heart on him in prayer and worship until you don't just believe but experience awe and wonder so he's moving from this conviction of yes we do believe so we're gonna worship we're gonna pray but we want to experience. That's what relationship is. So we begin experiencing who he is in awe and wonder. And so I thought that uh, was good as well. On April 5th, and again, this is recap, those of you joining in and uh, haven't been to day church, or we're going through the Tim Keller, uh, uh, God's wisdom uh, study in Proverbs. But April 5th, he talks about 
I'll read the scripture in Proverbs 24, verse 1 and 2. Do not envy the wicked. Do not desire their company. For their hearts plot violence, and their lips talk about making trouble. Well, there's a lot of application. Uh, I'm sure we could all go in different routes with that, right? It's do not desire their company. I wonder what kind of... But we can all evaluate the company that we keep based on our desires. <laughs> I binged watch uh, a series, uh, I had a desire to finish a series. Oh, that I'm, I'm going to get off track on that. But, but again, I have to watch the desire and reorder that. Be careful of the company we keep on social media, the company we keep uh, with what we're, we're watching, whether it's movies, what we're listening to. And so uh, Keller, April 5th, he talks about the sociology of desire. Sociologists know that we tend to find most plausible the ideas of the people with whom we spend the most time and to whom our admiration is most directed. Oh. So it, it, in other words, it's like we, we tend to receive, right? It's true in all of our relationships, those uh, that we spend most time with and even in the aspect of social media or uh, television, movies, etc., cetera, music, uh, that where we're spending our time and with whom, uh, in other words, will shape uh, who we are, will shape our ideas. And so we have to, again, he's addressing uh, watching the desires uh, that we have that can be shaped by things that are not right. Uh, are evil, are off-center uh, from, from Jesus being center. And so that's uh, April 5th. I want to uh, move to just a, an overview because Keller in the next few days uh, from April uh, 4, uh, 6th, 7th, 8th, uh, he talks about the sociology of desire which we just covered. And then uh, he goes on to say there's four typical God substitutes. So in, in his teaching, he says there's four typical God substitutes. So if you have the devotion, I know those of you don't, sorry about this, but it, it is good. But those who do, you'll see that, that he lists those four God substitutes uh, that can be substituted for the desire for God and for God truth. And so quickly, I'm just going to mention it. In, on April 6th, he he mentions approval as a God substitute, the, the need or the desire to, uh, for approval. Uh, and, and I think we can, we can all uh, recognize, we, we all want to be recognized, approved, um, uh, received and accepted, right? So he talks about that on, on April 6th. So four typical God sub substitutes, one is approval. Uh, the second one that he notes on April 7th devotional is comfort, uh, which again, we all, want, we all want comfort, we all want security, in other words. And, and so that can be a substitute for really laying our lives down, right? If, if I want so much, I'm personalizing this, I want so much, so I want to get so much toilet paper, this and that, and hoard, and, and, and I want security and the comfort to know that I'm going to be okay. It can really take away that God desire to say, lay it down. I got you. Be wise, but serve others. Give. So uh, that can be a substitute for that God desire. Number one, approval. Two, comfort, security. And, and three, he mentions on April 8th, power. Uh, and, and again, that may go without saying, but I think we all can recognize that our, uh, our desire for uh, power or authority. And I want to tie this next one in. Number four is control, which I think is, is uh, I mean, they hold hands together, don't they? Power and, and the, the, the need or desire for wanting to control. We want power, we want authority. Um, and again, it doesn't mean our, our, our personality, if, if it's such where, oh, we want to serve, we don't want to be the lead. It's not that kind of power. We all been tainted with this desire to, to want this 
power and control, controlling situations. There are uncontrollable situations. Uh, again, the, I refer to the past two funerals that I've done just today, this morning, yesterday. There were uncontrollable circumstances that affected uh, these people's health. Many of us, uh, and many of you, uh, either dealing with that or you know of someone within your family, our church family, there are uncontrollable things that uh, we want to control, right? But we're going to trust uh, that God is power, that He is ultimately in control. So just summarizing uh, in Tim Keller's devotional this past week, he's talking about desires, and then he goes into the sociology of desire, and and I really summarize that part is that we're influenced by our society. We're influenced by people that we hang with, people that we're listening to. So again, it could be people, it could be uh, the, could be media, it could be movies, could be whatever it might be, but it influences our desires. Ah, <sighs> who are we hanging out with, right? And that's why it's encouraging to, to see uh, on Facebook, on social media, uh, to receive texts, uh, and of course to call uh, emails, platforms. W what we're trying to do in our, in our spiritual community is bring encouragement to uh, help shape each other's desires and, and sort of lead and influence each other to desire Him and to trust Him that He is in control. So, you know, the substitutes of approval, comfort, power, control, that, that all can be fulfilled in uh, our relationship with God, right? And, and again, I believe as we've, we've been, many of us walking with the Lord, we see He is the fulfillment. He is the constant approval uh, of, of our lives. We don't have to prove ourselves. He is the constant security and comfort. He is power, right? And, and he, if we can relinquish our control and rights that we say God you are in control. You are in control of our lives, our situation, our hardships, our trials, and this pandemic. And then what's going on uh, with uh, the, the global economy and how it's affecting uh, many of you, many of us, and of course, uh, our city, state, and, and nation. And so I thought, wow, so powerful. Uh, by the way, those of you who are online and you uh, go to day church and uh, you have the devotional, share uh, just some thoughts on there. Uh, share an amen or, or a scripture that touches you or, or maybe there's a bridge to a different sort of context. But we'll go ahead and, and comment. And uh, while you're on there, again, we're, we're just we're gathering. This is an experience, just not a service in Bible study. And again, I know I'm doing all the talking on this end of, of the phone, but share with one another uh, just on the comments. And then again, those of you part of a New Hope Manoa Hana, you know it's in our hearts, it's in God's hearts that we stay connected, that we share a need. So we exchange phone numbers, etc., and we do what we can to, to be God's love and light to one another and then to the, the world around us, all right? So my prayer is that our, our desires uh, would continue to be shaped by the truths of, of God's Word. And again, some powerful thoughts uh, through Tim Keller's uh, uh, devotion. I want to sort of transition when I think about uh, desire and being overcome by desires for the Lord. Uh, I, I was just asking myself, and I would ask you, what are ways, what do you do uh, that enhance or cultivate godly desires it's worship in song fellowship uh, so maybe online you guys uh, share with one what are what are some uh, ways that you cultivate godly uh, desires and I know as we transition even as you share that with one another uh, online consider that what are what are ways what are ways that God wants you and I to cultivate godly desires in this season uh, again, some of you are working, you, you, you don't uh, have the extra time. Some have an extra time because they're staying at home or, or working from home, doing school from home. But what are ways, whatever situation, what are ways God, you would allow God to speak to you to reorder desires, to cultivate desires uh, for Him, a relationship uh, to Him? And again, 
um, share some of those things. If it's through song, worship, uh, uh, for me it has been in, in repentance as I'm, a ser I'm still serving you know, people, want to serve people, that's my heart, my calling, but whether it's through funerals, I'm uh, still counseling, uh, still giving guidance to some people. And so uh, I want to I wanna cultivate sort of this heart of while I'm giving, I'm, I'm making sure I'm receiving from him. Part of that receiving for me is uh, repentance is key, right, to, um, I believe, reordering our desires. So what are ways? All right, share it with, with one another. And as we transition now, I want to... I want to honor the Lord. Talk a little bit about Passover, uh, because this is a Passover Wednesday. We're in Passion Week. And by the way, uh, we are going to have a Good Friday uh, prayer worship time. We'll have some word, uh, so a Good Friday gathering at 7 p.m. this Friday. But uh, celebrating our resurrected Lord uh, this week, uh, this Sunday. But today it's it's Passover Wednesday so I want to talk a little bit about Passover many of us are familiar uh, with the institution of Passover uh, but if you're taking notes if you want to turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12 uh, I won't be reading out of that but I'm gonna to refer to uh, Exodus 12 as sort of the initiation of Passover God is calling his children out of the land of Egypt and, and there's is fierce opposition uh, of course, from Pharaoh uh, and uh, the Egyptians. And so he speaks to Moses and he says uh, to call the children, instruct the children of Israel he, that God will pass over the homes uh, and the families of those who have slaughtered the lamb and put their blood on the lintel and doorposts of their homes. And so, thus Passover, the slaughtered lamb and the blood of that lamb put on the lintel and the doorpost of those homes because judgment uh, was to come uh, in, in that day. And, and there was, again, uh, just massive disobedience on, on Pharaoh's part. Uh, and God was calling his people to himself. So the heart of this is not, and I believe, it's not just judgment. Does it include judgment? Most certainly includes judgment. But the blood of the Lamb here now, in our case, in our lives, that we've received the love of God by His grace. The blood of the Lamb uh, that He shed, He died for us, for our sins, that we would escape judgment because we've all sinned and fallen short of His perfection and righteousness, every one of us. Right? But so we've escaped that judgment and we've entered into so more importantly it's not receiving Christ and the blood of the Lamb is not uh, all about escaping judgment it's about entering into the promised relationship sort of that promised land relationship with him where we flourish in him where we enter into this kind of life relationship uh, that he desires for us and oh by the way the father says oh, I I want to pass over judgment I want I forgive you of judgment by the blood of my son Jesus Christ that's the cross that's Passover and so a couple of scriptures before we receive uh, communion so get a piece of bread cracker whatever it might be uh, some juice uh, and, and and, uh, and let's take together to honor him that he has passed over, not just for judgment's sake, but he has saved us from to enter into a, a life-giving, promise-filled relationship with him. In 1 Corinthians 5, 7, again, this is uh, the fulfillment, as Paul writes to the church uh, in Corinth. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Cleanse out the old leaven that you may be a new lump as you really are unleavened. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. So he is Christ, the Passover lamb, who was sacrificed uh, for us and for our sins. Not 
just to escape judgment, but to enter into this abundant life relationship. In John uh, chapter 1, verse 29, you recall uh, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. Right? That's, that's the Passover Lamb of God who takes away the sin of our hearts, our world, and the world around us. And this is a message we want to continue to share with those around us, that there's a gracious, loving Lamb of God who sacrificed His life. In Revelations 22, 3, again, towards the end of the book, this is the victory. No longer will there be anything accursed. This is what we live into. Eternal life now, it's not just the destination, but once <laughs> once we enter passing uh, uh, through this life, it says no longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. And so this would be a lot of, lot of love, a lot of worship, and a recognition of, of the Lamb of God, Revelation 22, 3. And then, uh, I, I love this passage. I, I use this quite, quite a bit, and I just, it brings such the emotional tone of Jesus, if we can just kind of linger in it. In, in Luke 22, 15, Luke 22, 15, and he, he said to them, so it's Jesus with his dis disciples, and he said, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. What a, um, wow, what a contrast, right? Uh, here, Jesus knows he's the Passover lamb. But he's saying, I desire. Remember, we were just talking about Tim Keller, just devotions throughout this week is reordering, reshaping our desires, checking our desires at the Word of God, being influenced. Um, you know, we're, we're influenced by, uh, by people, by, by what we are giving our, our ears to. And when I think about the greatest desire at, at the place where Jesus was with his disciples, he said, I eagerly desire to eat this Passover. And he says, before I suffer, can you, can you imagine that? Uh, so again, we know the story, but I think if we allow our hearts to marinate in it a little bit, we, we just by God's grace, by his spirit, have that, that, that emotional tone. It, it's a truthful emotional tone that, that Jesus, as the son of God and being human knowing that he will suffer he says i want this i desire this his desire wasn't affected uh, uh, and were changed it didn't change his calling or his purpose his desire to be obedient to his father to fulfill uh, his his call his purpose to give his life to be the Lamb of God. So uh, this Passover Wednesday, let's receive of, of the bread and the cup. And again, in honor, if you've taken communion every day or at times that we've taken, uh, as often as you and I uh, partake of this, but we honor Him. And I know that that's our hearts. We, we desire to honor Him. Jesus eagerly desired uh, to eat that Passover uh, with His disciples. And he became that Passover and suffered for us. Let's honor him together as we get uh, our, our, our bread or cracker and, uh, and juice. And let's thank him uh, right now. Yeah, let's go ahead right now just for you. Yeah, just thank him uh, just for the gift of your desire. He's gifted us desire. He's gifted us his, his spirit uh, to desire him, to love him, to walk with him and we recognize the the god of love and truth the god of mercy and compassion uh, the god of grace he has filled us with his spirit 
and we have him and now he gives us desire to say Jesus thank you thank you for forgiveness so Lord thank you we receive of of this bread with thanksgiving Lord thank you you not only broke the bread with your disciples but you became the bread of life and your body was given given uh, to to slaughter uh, for us Lord thank you for giving your body is for for us Lord because of love thank you and we receive this bread with honor thanking you for becoming the bread of God and that you are the lamb who gave your body it's received again Lord in this cup you said it's a it's a cup of, of a new covenant and uh, Lord we all realize we don't we don't need to slaughter animals lambs we don't need to physically put just fresh blood over our do doorposts but you became you are the Lamb of God and as we receive this cup we thank you for the gift of your blood your life giving blood for the forgiveness you forgave because you gave your blood and so we receive this with thanksgiving we turn we repent and we thank you for forgiveness so we humbly we reverently just partake of this cup it represents your blood for the forgiveness of our sins we do this in remembrance of you thank you lamb of god Ooh, yeah, man, so good, so good. Oh, well, let's uh, just thank the Lord together. I love that song. As many of you, I believe, love to uh, just thank Him for giving His heart and His life as we continue uh, to to give ours. Right.
What does the grave represent? Uh, the grave represents something, as I mentioned, having done two funerals the past couple of days. It can represent something that has been taken. That, that life is buried there. That there's treasure there. There's a valuable person or the persons remain. And, and, and the grave can represent it can represent good memories, it can represent bad, yeah. horrible memories. What's your grave today? And uh, as we close out this time, uh, I, just, I just feel like the Lord has dropped that in my own heart for me. What does a grave represent? And what are we asking Him to overcome? Because He did overcome the grave, right? He overcame our grave. He overcame our grave circumstances. So uh, let's continue to believe, pray, and entrust uh, those grave situations, what could be uh, and meant for, for evil and destruction, that we would say, God, uh, but you, you are mighty to save. You're the Passover lamb, and we trust you for our victory. Yes, our forgiveness seal, but we trust you for ongoing victory because you are the risen lamb of God. Amen. Shine your light and let the whole world see We're singing for the glory of the risen King God bless you guys. Uh, thanks for uh, tuning in. If you need anything, or share, call, text, email, uh, but be in touch continue to just build stay connected and of course with with jesus but but love you all join us this friday uh, we have prayer worship friday at seven of course our our service our experience on sunday to celebrate uh, jesus this sunday at nine uh, right here so love you guys let's be praying for our, our unsaved uh, just seeking um, you know non-christian friends or family uh, this week and trust that our risen savior We'll be doing a great work in their hearts. Anyway, love you guys. Okay.